Stop. Hold on. One second. That's Jay Z. Jay Z. Yeah, you trying wow. to try to see contact. It. Yeah. Okay. Well, Jay. I do lunch. Big hoes. I ain't got time. I got money to get. <laughs> 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 he said he flying in. Tell me, ain't got no time. <laughs> All right. So you gonna slate it? Huh? Oh yeah. Go ahead. Uh, you know the name of it. Take. <laughs> it was like. You mean it's like, yeah, like right? That thing. <laughs> he said the clacker. Clack. You mean slick? No clack. Right. Clackity clack. <laughs> take three. Welcome back to the insert name here. Trying to help indie podcast. Trying. That's trying. what we need to be. Trying Just to help trying. indie podcast. Man. It was like, because that's all I can do is try. I can't help. Can't make it happen for you. All I can do is try. If they if they take it and they run with it, then. Yeah. Then we did. Yeah. But, you know. My mom always say you can bring a horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. We try. Y'all had horses? No. See, people are always talking about this stuff. <laughs> they don't know. Talk about this indies. <laughs> uh. All right. So we tried, we tried talking about budgets last time. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like we fell short of the goal. Yeah. Um, and that's why we don't have we don't have a guest this week. Right. <laughs> no guests. No guests this week. Good on them. All right. So and here's the thing. Like, so I wanted to kind of just a recap from our last show. Mm-hmm. Um, based on what I was talking about, what did you take from what I was talking about in regards to budgets? So, um, well, you definitely need a budget because as independent artists, and I am one. Um, coming into the music industry, you think you just go and you do know you need marketing. Well, well, some people don't know that they need marketing, but you do need marketing. And you think you're just throwing your money, you know, at marketing, whatever that is and what that looks like. And it's going to work for you. Well, um, in my experience, my first experience with budgeting and even finding out what that was, was when I made my very first music video. And I went to the director and uh, the videographer, and I said, um, they asked me, well, what is your budget? And I looked at them and said, well, how much do you cost? And they were like, that's not how it works. You know, so I ended up having to go to one of my financial friends, and she kind of broke down to me that you have to look at what you have, what you're able to spend, what's realistically going to work for you, and then y'all can work off of that um, based on what they can do. Because... Um, when you have somebody with a skill set like that, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of things that they, that they can do. But when you bring a budget to them, that allows them to know what they can do based on what you got. You know, and some people are nice. They may do all the things you want them to do. But still, the budget is where the starting point is to know what we can work with, with what you got. Because they don't want to go rent a $1,000 camera if you can only pay them $500. You know, so we got to know your budget. Got to know what you're working with. Right. And, and, um, and that's what, like, Let's we'll talk about the budget and when I was ex- just kind of explaining that the budget is just a number. Mm-hmm. It's it's a it's a tool. It's a financial tool. Mm-hmm. It's um, a planning tool. Yeah. It's a constraint. Uh, it's no different than your height, your weight. Your, it's it just is. It's something you identify, you mm-hmm. label, and you know what it is. You quantify it. Right. Um, but there are things that you do to arrive there. It's mm-hmm. the it's the process of budgeting that really lends the value it's like your business plan if you do create a business plan if the business plan is cool and great to have a business plan but it's actually the act of planning the business right. where the value comes in because it makes you look at where, where's the money coming from mm-hmm. how are we going to get finance and how are we going to we got to put the financials together for 12 months well, what happens if this happens mm-hmm. and all of these different things like having to work through that and arriving at whatever you write, write, write down is great. You might not stick to it, mm-hmm. but having went through that process uh, makes you better prepared to start a launch of business. And so, but that's scary for some people. It is, you know, especially when you've never done it before. You've never set up a budget. You've never even nobody's but, ever. Nah, sh- you do it all the time, and that's what I was explaining to him mm-hmm. when he went AWOL. Um, <laughs> it's like in every AWOL. everybody's life, everybody budgets routinely you just mm-hmm. don't think about it you budget your time you budget uh everybody has money everybody spend money so okay. if you spending money you budgeting right like oh you yeah you gave that example like <laughs> yeah. when you go out to eat um 
and you have that budget on, okay, I got this amount of money in my pocket. Right. We can't go above this because if we do, we washing dishes. Right. Right. So and, and so like you do it without even thinking. Mm-hmm. And so like, mm-hmm. and that's the my point of why I always try to use that example is to show people how they budget all the time. Wow. And so it's like often yeah. you do a thing, but because you don't think about it like as a as a process. Mm-hmm. Um, you haven't titled the process of it. You don't think about that you're actually doing it. Right. So like you like you wouldn't say that you do project management. Right. But you manage projects. But yeah. You've put together an album. Mm-hmm. You've put together an event. Mm-hmm. Um, you've planned a vacation or a trip. This is true. Like even if you're just going home to visit your parents, like mm-hmm. you know that you have to whatever um, request time off work. Mm-hmm. It's like a list of tasks that have that have you have to accomplish in order for this project to, to be considered happen. complete. Yeah. And so in your head, you you go through this check, like I do this, 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 this. All right, how much money I got for that? Well, this I'm gonna keep the the budget for the flights need to be this. Well, am I gonna get a hotel when I go back? Or I'm gonna stay with it. Let me check and make sure that mm-hmm. they it's all of these things that come through your head and you put together a checklist and, and you have a project and you get it done. And so it's like um we we have a we have a lot of skills that we don't um we don't necessarily feel confidence in mm-hmm. or value because they're not always put in the context of business. Right. And I think that's one of the things where hip hop and urban music and like what black people have done in the music industry is an interesting thing when you look at how many people came from the streets and built businesses in like corporate America and in these spaces because it's like those same skill sets that you learn in the streets are mm-hmm. the same skill sets Since you use in corporate. Yeah. Except for less less uh risk. Right. <laughs> right. So it's like so that's the kind of the thing is um you have the the skill sets that you you utilize and learn in your day to day, but um I think they went the problem is they don't get applied when we get into the music space, mm-hmm. when we get into the entrepreneur side, uh entrepreneurial side of things. Um, so when we're talking budgeting, um, that's why I was like, I jumped immediately to, well, before we can do that, we got to figure out what the goal is. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. when you go to your videographer, and I feel like that's a great example is because mm-hmm. that's generally the first time most artists have to Realize deal with the word, the budget, budget like that, mm-hmm. because that's one of those things that when you're an artist, you make a music. Yeah. Um, Producers sell their beats. Yep. It's a price. Telling you a price, yeah. Um, studio, it's price. a price. Everything. But when you want to, like, after you made a few songs. Mm-hmm. Now like, I'm ready to do, do that a video. video. Now, you got some people that do, will do a price, but every every videographer kind of has an understanding that, yo, it's a lot of different that stuff we can into, do. Right. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. so if you want these type of, so even if it's a price, like, the people who have a price for their music video, they know I'm working with low tier artists. Mm. So it's usually a low price, like mm. 250 for a video. And I'm just gonna come and do this in your face for like 50 <laughs> minutes and then. And it's just you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, but it's like, when they get into like, yo, is this gonna be multiple locations? Mm-hmm. Is it? So even if they start, Pops. like, I have a 250 price, when you call them, they're still gonna ask, yeah. what's your budget? Mm-hmm. And so, and, and and that I think that's the thing where artists get scared when people ask what the budget is because now I'm asking you about how much money you got, and and it's not, and it, like that's the way it's interpreted that's because true. it just means here's what it is is what is the number that you've set? Mm. That don't even mean that's the money that you got. True, and mo- nine times out of ten you ain't set no number, and that's the problem. And that's what's scary. Yeah, because they, they're like budget, and you like scrambling in your brain now to think. Mm, what 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 do you think they cost? What do you think? What is a good price for them? And when you don't know, that is can be quite scary because that's how it was for me, you know, um, my first time experience. <clears throat> but I guess it's again, it's knowing what goes into that budget. What what does that mean? What does that look like? You want to know you? why it's scary? Why? Because y'all don't look dumb, right? That's really, it's yeah. that ego, it's the insecurity. Ego. Because you know, you don't know nothing about this shit. None. 
None. Not none. Like, you don't know how much video costs. What's a good, like, man, I don't want to say nothing too low. Yeah. And I don't want to say nothing too, too high, high and get taken advantage right. of. Like, because you don't know, because you haven't done any kind of research. Mm-hmm. And so, here's the thing. You you know what you can afford to spend. Mm-hmm. And so where I, I, with that budget question, most independent artists actually screw themselves up in hopes that they hit a lick, mm. in hopes that they get over on somebody. I don't want to say too much, mm. right? I'd rather not say anything in hopes that they say less than what I'm willing to spend. And I mean, and I say, you have those people, though. You have those people... Um, as videographers who they probably would have did a, a really great video for you for 1500 but because now I said 3000 they like, oh, well, well yeah, 3000 then. Like, I've seen that too. <coughs> and that's why I think people get scared because it's like, shoot, well, if I only had 1500 but, you know, they look like their work is quality work and they probably going to charge me 3000 and I don't know and they're asking me for a budget and I got to come up with this and you know it becomes a lot let me let me give it to you right this this is this is you you're a songwriter yeah right mm-hmm. cuz it's it's funny like right if you write songs for 1500 and someone hears one of your songs and says yo I got 3000 can you write me a song you gonna what like, you going to yeah. do yeah right and it's okay when you do it mm-hmm. it's cool when you do it right. it's a problem when I do it <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's like in the hopes that, that you can get business. over. In the hopes mm-hmm. that you can get over. So you're banking. Because here's the thing. Someone who does a video that you only feel is worth $1,500, you're never going to pay them $3,000. Right. So what you're afraid of is paying someone what you think they're worth. Mm. Think about that. Yeah. You're afraid of paying someone what you think they're worth if you can, on the off chance that you can pay them less, less than what they are actually worth. Right. So That's a terrible, that's why I say artists are shitty people. Uh, that could be the name of the podcast. Artists, artists are, are shitty, shitty people. people. <laughs> that is the name. Of the hey, podcast. that's actually a really good name. Because somebody's going to be like, what? No, we ain't. Because, yeah. But it's like, it's these, it's these base, yeah. like, kind of thoughts mm-hmm. that, that, create negative actions that impair like artists from seeing their true potential. Cause like what you just did, you put me in the place of that person that's receiving instead of giving. They're creative, just like you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, you would have wrote your ass off of that three thousand dollars. You would have man, you would have had so many metaphors that you know <laughs> like hey shoot man, I, what? I'll make sure they come back. <laughs> I'm the dream in that bit. What you mean? <laughs> yes. And, and so, like, I say that, so in the in the off chance that you get over, like, so I don't want to say what I actually, this is what I can afford to spend. Mm-hmm. Because if if I'm willing to spend 3000 but they say 1500 then I got to, I, I have a come up. Right. But what you end up doing is you create discomfort, this whole, well, I don't know, uh, what's your budget? What's your cost? And what's your price? And it's like, all right. Like, you create more friction. Mm -hmm. And so then, one, that shouldn't be the only person you asking. Mm -hmm. And it's like, the and I I tell this to, this is the way I would tell artists to handle this all the time, and this is why you want to learn how to set a budget is, you should know what you're willing to spend. So if your budget's $1,500 for the video, then you can talk to 20 videographers Mm -hmm. and tell every single one of them, I got $1,500. This is the song. What can you do with mm. that? So you have a control, and now you can measure and weigh all of these bids or these proposals against each other. But when one guy says, I, for this, I can do $3,000, and we can do all this. And someone says, well, I got for $2,200, I can do all of this. And someone says, for $1,000, I can do this. And it's yeah. like all of the things are different. Yeah. All of them are, the videographers are different. The timetables are different. And the prices are different. Yeah. So there's nothing... There's no 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 point of reference to even compare them against each other. So you really don't, you, it's hard to even gauge a value because you don't have a control mm-hmm. in the group. And so most often, like, when artists just want a price, they just want to know how much to spend, and then they don't want to, like, that's part of running a business. 
Like, and that's why I was like, artists get taken advantage of because they don't, they don't shop around. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like... That happened to me, too, by the way. <laughs> the very first time. That definitely happened to me. I did not shop around. Right. I went to one person, said, this is what I got. Well, I asked them first. I'm, well, they asked me for the budget. I said, well, how much do you cost? Mm-hmm. And they said, it don't work like that. Find, you know, made my budget. Mm-hmm. And then told them my budget. And they said, all right, we can do it. And... I went with it, and in the end product, I ain't gonna say I was the happiest. I was, it was decent, you yeah. know. Um, I made the treatment, and it was cool, but it wasn't everything. What was your that budget? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Yeah. All right. So, and what did you what did you want for fifteen hundred? Um, I got I wanted four scenes, um, four different sets: a dance scene, a dollhouse scene, um, a pool scene, which was the acting part of it, and a school scene. And I got the four scenes. Nope, that's a lie. I wanted the fifth. Well, yeah, I got the four scenes. Some B roll. Um, I wanted a drone shot. Never got that drone shot. Um, he brought it and tried to do it. It just didn't work out. Right. And it didn't look good. So we never used it. Cut that all the way out. And there was a couple more scenes that I wanted that we cut out. So I didn't get everything I wanted. Right. But um, overall, the project was still in the area of my idea. Yeah. You 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 wanted too much for fifteen hundred, and see, and here's the <laughs> no no being honest with yeah. you, and this is the importance of like, and on their on their end they got to do good business too, uh-huh. like so I'm 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 neutral, like you come to me with fifteen hundred, and and this is what I say the budget is what you're willing to expend mm-hmm. for what the desired outcome is. Right. So you have a desired outcome, a vision of what you want. And then you have, hey, this is fifteen hundred. This is what I'm willing to spend to get that. Right. So then I can sit up and say, all right, for fifteen hundred, let's sit down. And one, you shouldn't be doing your treatment. Like we should be doing it together. Oh, okay. Because right. you don't know the technical nuances what, that it takes. What it, like, yeah. so you want to do a night scene? That means I gotta get um, lights. Mm-hmm. I gotta get a generator. We gotta have this location. Like, all right, because we're gonna be outdoors if you're trying right. to do this. And now instantly, that's three hundred dollars out of your budget just on this equipment rental that you're not thinking about. Where if I were while we're doing this, I could be like, "Yeah, that's gonna be an extra three hundred dollars if you mm-hmm. want to do that." And you're like, "Oh, well, we could just do it inside then." Like, and then boom. Then now, changes. but so mm-hmm. it's like, um, and 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 this is why it, it's it's important to be able to talk openly mm-hmm. about money. And so when when a person comes to you and it's like, what's your price and versus the budget? Then it's like kind of knowing what kind of artist you're dealing with and how comfortable they are talking about money. Mm-hmm. Then it turns into, all right, this is all, this is what they like. It it's they're not they're probably not the person you're going to be able to negotiate mm-hmm. with and be like, well, we can do this for three hundred. Well, if we do eighteen hundred, we can do this other scene. It's like mm-hmm. I gotta try to fit everything I can into yeah. this amount of money. Otherwise, they're not gonna spend it. Right. And if they're not good business people, they will allow you to keep those expectations for the the eighteen hundred or the twenty four hundred that actually it's gonna take to spend. And they're gonna try to they're going to try then to finagle and and finesse a way to get the most out of the money. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's I not gotta come out too well. Yeah, and and I, I watch this often. Like that's where, um, for instance, like we do events during um, South by, and mm-hmm. we do like a lot of events. Like even here in the city, sometimes, like when I do things, I schedule performances, and I'll, I'll give, I'll tell a person less time, or that they can't perform. And it's like, you know, like, cause I rather. I'd rather you deal with low expectations. Low expectation. Ex- and if I have extra time, let you rock out. Rock. Mm-hmm. Or let you do that extra song. Or do like because I don't want you coming into any situation with a certain expectation mm-hmm. and it not being able to be met because I'm I'm creating a hypothetical future of everything going perfectly. But doesn't that mess up their preparation? No. Nope. I, I and so be one of the things like our for our media matters event that we do during South by Southwest, mm. 
um, every year, like the artists, they get like a two, three song set. Like um, even when I do shows where people can pay to perform, when we do those, like I limit the amount of artists that we put on it. Like most people do these shows and it's about how many artists can we get on stage in this window of time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we give each artist three minutes, then we can get 20 artists up an hour. And I'm like, like, you ain't got no host, nigga? Right. Ain't nobody gonna play no music? <laughs> like, like, what's going on? Like, <laughs> you kind of squeeze that money in there, boy. Yeah, and, I tell but, you. but that's, I watch mm -hmm. this all the time. I'm like, nah, I'm good on that. Like, I, mm -hmm. we do, like, all right, we'll put one, one artist up every 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like, and we, we budget the entire event based off of, so yeah, we might be able to get two artists up within this 15 minute window. But it's like, we like the DJ to be able to play music to keep the lively energy. If, if a guest from one of the labels come in, I bring them up on stage, we chop it up. Like I don't, like it allows for like a certain free flowing mm -hmm. element to the event yeah. where we can continue to stay on schedule and make sure that every, body's expectations are I'm met. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's about, and that's how I budget my time mm -hmm. and our resources when we do things. So um, so like when it comes to like someone doing a video, doing some kind of service, um, always budgeting in, in, in that regard. Like, so, hey, these are your expectations. This is what you want to do. All right. Um, if you give me this budget of $1,500 and then you, and here's, here's one of the problems. You had a vision, you should have asked for a quote. Instead of asking for the price. Right. No, well, that's the same thing, but it's not knowing that the word is different. Yeah. So, yep. Most times, like if you, when you say, hey, I want to shoot a video, and they ask, what's your budget? It was like, well, what's your price? Can't give you a price, price. based off an abstract concept. Right. Music video, that's like, how much is a house? I don't know. <laughs> but if I say, yo, how much is a three bedroom, two bath ranch mm -hmm. in Decatur? Oh, there are some comps and I can give you a, a roundabout price. Right. What's it called? Right. Okay, yeah, it's gonna be around here. Yeah. And so you know whether it's all right, that's way out of the budget. Like, yo, what what you got um over in this area? Like, mm -hmm. so it's it's Things that you can go against, so, but the more specific you are, then yep. I can give you an actual ballpark figure and understand that it's going to vary when we get down to the details of specifically what I'm doing for you. And that goes back to knowing what to ask, what to say, because a lot of artists do not. Yeah. We don't know what to say. We don't know the right questions to ask. So we get caught in these awkward positions or tough positions where we're just like, uh, well, I don't know my budget. Let me go find out. But yeah. I, I know my vision, but I couldn't tell you that because I didn't know that you could have based a price off of my vision. Right, and that and that's when like when so mm -hmm. when artists are um, looking for pricing, like if you're getting a service or you're looking for someone to do something, if you come and you ask them, hey, how much is it to do this? That's one thing, and mm -hmm. they can they can like, all right, I can quote that. But when you just ask, how much is it to do what you do, and what they do is very, very ethereal yeah, and creative, and yeah, of, yeah. It, it's it's like yo, you gotta give me something to right. work with. Like <laughs> if you tell me fifteen hundred dollars, like oh, here's what I got, here's the vision I got. Let me listen to the song. I was thinking we could do this and we could mm -hmm. do that, and we do like two scenes, and then they probably would have came up with something way over than what you came up with. Yep, because they know what they could have executed based on. It's true. And so, like, sometimes that's also the problem. So you, when you don't know the nuance of their art or mm -hmm. what it is that they do. They do what their specialty is, too. Exactly. Yeah, later on I found out his specialty was dance videos versus, you know, what I was asking for. And, <laughs> and then what his relationships and whatever is. So, yeah, I got some TikTokers that mm -hmm. do this, and they're like, and they would have came yep. out and did. And, and that could have made a way different. Yeah, yeah, but you're trying to be an artsy artist. Like, right. I'm, I'm stuck I wanna, in my I want to be in a dollhouse, right. and I want to come out, and then I want them and to I'm, scan me, I and then I'm going to be like a... <laughs> and tell the story of how and I was in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah it got... And, and so, like, that's that's the, the thing of... And that's why, like, a lot of these conversations with these questions, um, like, I, I know 
probably I frustrate a lot of artists when I would talk to them because I'm I'm very picky about the words we use. And it's like, um, because the words, all of them have meaning. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and if there's a miscommunication, even if we're saying the same words, it could have different meaning. Like, even just, what does mean mean? You feel me? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> like, it, it's like, I'm angry, the average of something, mm -hmm. like the definition of something. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's like so many... Yeah. And, and so, like, when we get into those things, so when you asking the budget when you're at, and you don't have a number, and it's like, but you're asking for a price, mm -hmm. but you don't have a desired deliverable. Right. And it's like, so it's like, yo, what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. And we're having a hard time communicating, and then we're not doing it honestly, because it's around money and you're trying to make sure you don't get got mm -hmm. and hopefully you can get over and they're trying to do the same thing, <laughs> hoping that they don't get got because you actually had $3,000, but, but you only wanted to pay them $1,500 $1, right. and they got to try to do all this extra stuff. Whew. That's where the problem comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Artists are terrible people. <laughs> We're not, <laughs> but no. We just don't know. But it's what not we just don't know. Here's, not we, the not the singer, songwriter, rapper. Yeah. Guess what? What? The videographer is an artist too. That's true. Like that's the whole thing. Creative. When, when someone makes Creatives money, are horrible. Once once saying. someone starts making money, we act like they're not an artist anymore. Yeah. All these DJs just yo the DJ that's is an artist. artist too. That's true. <laughs> Damn. Never so, even thought about that. Yeah. That's true. So, so going back to the budget. Yep. So you define what the goal is, what the vision is, whatever that is, mm -hmm. and then what you're willing to sacrifice to have that. Mm. Time, money, favors, relationships, whatever. And then that's what your budget is. And when you have that, that number, having to go through that thought process allows you to know, like, well, I have X amount of dollars right now. I'm willing to wait two months, and we can shoot it in the summer or later on so I can save up this extra money. So I, it ain't even the money I have. It's the money that I'm willing to put toward it. Right. So I may have 2000 right now, but I can put an extra 1500 with it, and I'm willing to wait two months to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, all of these things matter. Um, and so when you approach someone and now you're looking to get this video shot, it's like, yo, the budget's $3,500. i am looking to shoot it this summer. And that's a different conversation. Yeah. And so um, when, when we do this whole thing of putting the budget together um, for, for artists and creatives, um, when I do my workshops. I was just about to ask about that. What? Like, your workshops. Yeah. So you said you teach uh, you teach artists basically about budgeting. Yeah. And, and what does that look like? Um, so, like, how much is your rent? 2500 That's how it looks. Like, I start with that. Oh. See, artists put together these budgets for their music mm -hmm. like they don't have a life to live. Right. And that's why they fail at music. Because if you got to choose what you're going to lose at, life or music, I think I'm going to keep this life thing right. going. <laughs> I ain't got to do this over here. Studio time or rent. <laughs> We're going to have to reschedule. Right. No facts. Right. The landlord ain't letting you reschedule. Nope. <laughs> and so it's like. Not even a little bit. Rent. Um, mortgage, car right. note, insurance, Electric, all garbage, of that. So we that. go through like your life. <laughs> like the first thing, like when we when we do this workshop, is like, yo, write down all of your expenses, mm -hmm. not this music stuff. Like life. What do you? Live. Yeah. How much does it cost you to live? Yo, for yeah. you not to be stressed, how much are you spending a month? Mm. And like that's the reality, and that's why for me, like uh, my thing when it comes to this music is very different. Success isn't. Grammys or anything is like it's for creatives to have a healthy relationship with what it is that they do. Mm -hmm. So it's about being happy. Mm -hmm. So if if for me, if you make three thousand dollars a year doing music, oh. you're successful. Okay, yeah. If you make Just... a few hundred dollars, if you if it pays for yourself itself, it's successful. Like because you would be doing it anyway. If you're yeah. a real artist. 
you're going to do this regardless of if you win yeah, or yeah, lose. Yeah, true. <laughs> so if you can do it in a way where it adds value to your life, where you buy some Christmas gifts, where Another you get... Another stream of income or something. Yeah, like yeah. people people do all kind of MLMs and Bitcoins and try and make some money. So you telling me this thing that you already love doing, if it couldn't provide you a few extra thousand dollars a year, mm-hmm. I ain't even talking about on a monthly basis. If it paid for your vacation every summer. And yeah. so we be so brainwashed into what success looks like. Based on what Megan Thee Stallion says it is, or Big Lotto, you know, it has to look like that for us to be successful. I love how your only examples were women. I'm a woman. I know. Oh, okay. So when men do it, it just be, no, no, like, like I was like, I was like, I, those weren't the first two people. I was like, you went Meg, and I was like, and then you doubled down on Lotto. I was like, see? <laughs> Cause that's that's, what I see. I that's like you, off of women. and you're not basing it off of the BS, like oh, no. so. And so, like that's the thing is like when it comes to when it comes to like what we uh, identify as success, mm-hmm. and so often you can't set a genuine budget because your goal of what you think success is is I need to be on the rap caviar. And so when you try to put your playlist budget together, you like, I need to get on rap caviar. What I got to do to get on rap caviar? And it's like, bruh, you ain't got that. I got whatever it takes. Man. <laughs> no, you and that's the biggest BS. Because <laughs> you got to have those realistic goals to actually hit before yeah. you can get there. And people got to know you. And, you, you know, you got to get out there. So. And so that's the that's the difficulty. Yeah. So it's getting, getting that established. So when I work with artists, um, when we put together the budget, your life is a factor in this. Mm -hmm. We don't act like this music industry happens in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. So we go, boom, here are all your expenses. Life expense. And then what do you have left to actually add towards your... You got to figure out what your discretionary income is. Wow. Like... So that's why I be like, like when I when I was explaining, your budget is generally it's one of two things: what you can afford to spend for an outcome, mm. or what you're willing to spend for an outcome. Mm. And so a lot of people think it's what they're willing to spend. Like you can't afford to spend what you're willing to spend. What, what you can afford to spend, yeah. what you're willing to spend. Everybody like, ah, oh, I spent things. a hundred thousand. I'm like, bro, you can't, don't make that a year. You can't <laughs> And, and then so, some yeah. some people spend over their budget, even though if even if you don't have a budget, sometimes mm. high people spend over what they even got to make, and then they go broke, and yeah. then wonder why and what they went wrong, and then they move back wherever they came from. Yeah, and, and like and that's the thing and that I'll be trying to depression avoid. Depression and things just go bad. And yeah. yeah, wow. And it and it stems from people not wanting to have uncomfortable conversations. conversations. Uncomfortable conversations. Yeah. Their ego's too big sometimes. Ooh, we could do uncomfortable conversations with artists. Mm. That's like <laughs> mm. conversations that make artists uncomfortable. Yeah. Then you have what we had last week. <laughs> <laughs> uncomfortable artists having yeah. conversations. Um, so no, so like that's the thing. Um, when you when we establish um your actual expenses for living, Mm -hmm. and then what your monthly income is. And the difference between those two is your discretionary income, like Mm -hmm. what you can spend on whatever you want to. Like all your needs and necessities are there, and now this extra $3,000 a month you have, $1,500 a month you have, the thing that I do at that point is like, what percentage of this are you willing to spend Mm -hmm. on your music? To which point, ninety percent of the artists be like, hundred percent of it. I'm like, so you turning off Netflix? <laughs> like, you, you ain't never gonna eat out. Like, you don't, you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't. Dang, you just gonna just it. sit in the house in the. And <laughs> just, <laughs> just work on music, and that's it. Yeah. And so, like, and and then like get them to dial it back and yeah. live. Like, be realistic. Yeah. yeah. And because it's like, because you still want to have a quality of life. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and and so if you sacrifice a quality, and but for some people they just love doing music, and that can make sense. So I'm not gonna say there aren't cases where. I mean, but you can't sacrifice your rent. You can't sacrifice. No, no. Your- see, that's already. It's the, this is purely discretionary spending. Oh, okay. That's why we okay. get there. So this percentage is based off of just the discretionary. So what spending. you got left? So if you have 
let's say you have eight thousand dollars worth of bills and you spend, you make ten thousand dollars a month, your discretionary is two thousand. Mm-hmm. So when you say a hundred percent of it, that means all two thousand dollars going to a Jamila. Which means you ain't going out no more with friends. You ain't you doing single. nothing. Right. Or a nigga in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Too many of y'all shit. <laughs> so at this point you you're you're you have a, a a certain amount of money that can go toward yeah um your music and generally like I start at 50%. Hmm. And so I think that's good like you can go up or you can go down based on but 50% is reasonable. So you may do like $1,000 a month that goes towards your music. Um, and so the way that I do budgeting, I, I don't think artists, I, I hate project-based budgeting. Um, I don't think you should have a budget for this single or a budget for this. Um, music video? Music video. I don't like that either. What? Like, uh, I think you, you, you will budget for it. But I don't think you should develop a budget for, for it. it. Like, yeah, I gotta put this, we gotta do a music. So you make the music mm-hmm. video the goal. And so that's your desired outcome. So how does that work if you don't budget for the I'm gonna show you. Okay. Because right now, like when you wanna do a music video, mm-hmm. what was you gonna do after you after you did the music video? What did you do with it? You gotta market it. What did you do with it? What did you do with it? Oh, with the one I have now? Yeah. Um, it's playing on the enterprise TV, so it's on a network, right. and it's just being streamed, pretty much. Now, mm-hmm. do you feel like you're doing the most you could do with it for you having already invested $1,500 into it? Nah, there's more I can do. And so that's the thing. The goal with that money was just to get a thing. Yeah. And now you have that thing, uh-huh. and it's like, all right. What next? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What next with that thing? <laughs> so it doesn't lend itself to something else. I mean, it's, the thing is done, though. And so when I do have the next amount of See? money. See? Are you seeing what the problem is? To, okay. I kind of, kind of. But, like, still, I still feel like you have to have a budget to make that thing happen. And then after that thing, the... the it's backwards. And so here's what I'm showing you, right? So now... Take you, for example. So let's say this was your budget, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 10000 a month income, 8000 expenses, 2000 We're only going to put 50, 50% toward it. Mm-hmm. So that means $1,000 a month is going to go towards your music, mm-hmm. right? So now $1,000 going towards your music. It's January. We're forecasting the next year. That's $12,000. Right. Let's say you have already have $2,500 or $3,000 saved up right now from last year when you mm-hmm. was doing stuff. And I said, stop, don't do any more. Just let's do your budget. Yeah. And so now you have $3,000 saved up. $1,000 a month is going to go towards your music. You have $15,000. That's your budget for your music, for your career, for your business for 2023. So that's all. I know that I have that. Yeah. So now I can plan Based, Based on, on consistency. Mm. So that's like every quarter around $3,800 you can spend. Every mm. month around twelve fifty you can spend. No, that actually makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because now I can plan to do this video at this time knowing that I'll have this amount of money and then also still have money to put it out and do more with it later because I... And still be recording and still doing events and, and still, still doing my merch. bills. Yeah. And still... <laughs> See, right, versus and, spending it all up, and now I'm, yeah. So when you wow. think of a budget as not as a tool and as like, ah, I need this amount of money. If I don't have this money, and then it becomes this amount of money to get this thing done, but that thing doesn't play a role in the bigger scheme uh-huh. of your career. Uh-huh. Wow, I wish I had this two years ago. Yeah. You have it now. <laughs> right, <laughs> you're right, right. So, so now... If you're looking at it in that sense, so now you have the bigger, you have your annual budget, you can break it down into quarterly, which you can spend, monthly, you can see, so you know, if your quarterly is like 3750 monthly is 1250 if you spend, someone can have a great deal for you, right? Great opportunity. Let's say you want to do a music video and I don't know, um, who, who's a big... Videographer Cole Bennett hits you up. He's like, "Yo, I love this song. 
I'll shoot the video for you for $5,000. And you know, he charges way more than that. Yeah. And it's great. <laughs> and it's like, but your budget is 15000 for you. That's a third of your budget just yeah. on one music video. Now, you may have all this money saved. You got 3000 saved up. It's March. You already put 1000 aside. Like, two, yeah. 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 So you months. got the money. Yeah, but that's all your money. And now you can make decisions based on your budget mm -hmm. and not based on your what pocket. You right there. Yeah. Yep, yep, and yep. so that's the problem. Like, often artists make decisions based off of their pocket and not their budget. Hmm. So it's like, oh, when you think that money, the budget is just the money you have. Then you jump on opportunities because you have the money in your pocket, but it's not there really for your budget because it's all these other things that also have to come out. Or you pass up opportunities because you actually had the budget, but you just didn't have the money at the time. So maybe someone wants to shoot the video for you and they're going to help promote it and all these other things, but they want $2,500 instead of $1,500. Mm -hmm. But you know that, well, I got this much right now and I know I'll be putting another thousand in next month for this month but they're going to help promote it so that's going to cut out some of the stuff that I got to spend with that and I'll still have $500 a month for the next two months that I can put toward these ads and these other things yeah let's run it and so because now you're making the decision not just based off of how much you have in your pocket you're basing it off of a budget which now I'm realizing I didn't even know the definition of a budget. I knew this at the beginning. That's why I said, she'll get it at the end. Because, <laughs> yeah, the way you just broke that down, I said, so that I was basing it off of what I had in my pocket, not over a period of time what I was going to accumulate and then make the plans for that, which is yeah, a budget. It's just a tool. It's just the number. Hmm. Like, and that's the thing because it's, it's, so, huh. it's, so, you, it's used so interchangeably with what you have. Yeah that sometimes it loses its actual meaning because huh. it's tied too tightly to it. And that's why I say it's not just the... Because you don't have time. Right. You don't have time. Like, you only experience a, a fraction of a second. Everything else is in the past. The Everything future. else is a guess. Yeah. So you don't have <laughs> <Yes>. anything, right? <laughs> but we budget based on what we think we're going to be giving, that we're praying to keep having, yeah. right? And so we budget our time some shit we don't have. That's not real. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's just wow. the idea. Wow. So this was far more productive. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was. Than last week, talking about houses and how much you pay for it. Man, I just, you know, I just buy. Like, I was like, you, you got two of them? You got another one in back? Bring me another one. Bring me another one. <laughs> That was ridiculous. I was like, dude, you ain't never bought a house. I can, I can tell. I ain't never bought a house, but I know you really yeah. ain't never even been through the process of seeing no <laughs> shit, because that is not how it works. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to go ahead and get that one yeah. right off of you. You got it in blue. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Yeah. So, but yeah, like that's the, um, like when artists um, get comfortable talking about money, mm. And this is like the 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 thing that I, I try to put out there. That yeah. need to be a conversation. Yeah, we can definitely. Yeah. Next show. Yeah, getting comfortable mm. talking about money because that is a tough. Yeah. I think a lot of our barriers are that right there. Yeah. Because money is the tool again. That's the tool that we need to even accelerate our music career. Yeah. If we're so uncomfortable, our egos are too big. We don't want to talk about. It. I don't want nobody thinking we broke. Right. So. Nah. <laughs> Everybody knows you are. Right. <laughs> But I don't, I don't want you to know, no, that I am. So I'm going like, to make it, make it the, look like. That'd be the funniest I'm going to go get thing. this nice-ass expensive car that I can't afford. And I'm going to go pay for this high-rise building that I can't, I can't stay in. But I just want you to know I'm not broke, even though I am. And that's, that's <laughs> it's just, it's hilarious. This shit is so. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> next episode, yeah. next episode. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's the topic for the next episode. Yeah. I think I think I feel like we've wrapped up the budget yeah. conversation. Hopefully, yeah. it's nothing. So a budget is just a tool. Um, what it looks like is a number. Yeah, it ain't a complicated um, document or anything like that. It's not uh, the money that's in an account. It's a number that's in your head. 
It's what you can afford or are willing to spend for a desired outcome. Mm -hmm. It's the process of creating the budget that adds the value. And that's why I like walk through the example. So I had to explain all that stuff. And then when I walk through the example, you see the yeah. value of creating that it. Budget. Yep. And it changes your whole perspective on everything. Like it, looking back, oh, I could have did that's, this. And then yes. like looking forward. And yeah. so yeah. like once you have that tool, then it it allows you to to build. And that's why I say like, for me, I don't I like time based budget, so annual, mm -hmm. quarterly, um, versus projects because then that you fixate right. on an end goal for a thing instead of for you. Yeah. So when your when your budget is annual, it's like what are my goals for this year mm -hmm. versus how can I get this event done or how can I get this thing done and you can do those things and then not actually be what you want and put you in a position that you want to be in yeah. at the end of it. Yep. So if y'all have any questions about this that you did not get answered, go ahead and leave a comment or drop oh, a message. You be on YouTube. I be forgetting about look. stuff. Like, <laughs> like, subscribe to the you channel, know. drop yeah. comments. Uh -huh. If it was something that was helpful, let us know. You go got ahead, a question? Share that thing. Share that Share thing. That thing. <laughs> And then we'll get to your question on the next episode at the top. We probably just, you know, get a little moment, yeah. five minutes, and answer your questions if you have any. And then we'll roll into the next topic. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, y'all. We out. Be easy. Clack. <laughs> <laughs>